right. So the recording has officially started and I will begin sharing the presentation. All right. So welcome to 60 databases in 60 minutes. Um, our session goals are to sort of break us out of our research habits and ruts by giving us some exposure to databases we may have overlooked, never heard of, or forgotten about. Um, so hopefully there will be something in here for everyone. And if we hit our timeline right, there will be some time for troubleshooting your challenges or asking you about your favorite resources that you really want your colleagues and students to know about. So who we are, I'm Olivia Ivey, um, I'm the public affairs librarian. So you will see that I have chosen a lot of databases that speak to law and government and public affairs. Um, team members, jump in and say hi. Hi, I'm Katie Hutt, I'm the business and econ librarian. So similarly, a lot of my chosen databases um, have a business and or econ focus, but not all. You're muted, Catherine. Yes, well, I'm Catherine Ray, now unmuted, and I am one of the general reference librarians in research assistance. I don't have a specific portfolio, but my particular interest is in DC history. So if you have any questions, please send them my way. And I am Clarissa Eisen, the science librarian, and you'll notice I have half fun science resources and just fun resources. Awesome. And we are not keeping score on the 60 second point. We've allowed ourselves a little bit of leeway to go over from time to time, but feel free to keep your own tally to see who among us is, is sticking to our 60 second uh, limit for each slide. So with that, here we go. Uh, so we're going to get started with Jane's. So this is a super niche database to kick us off. Jane's is a very detailed sort of news and analyst website that looks at um, country profiles with an emphasis on defense capabilities and defense budgets. They also have a terrorism and insurgency section where they look at non-government <laughs> related operators who perhaps use violent techniques to push a particular agenda. Um, so there's an ability here to search or browse by location, by the name of the group, by the type of incident that, um, that you might be interested in. I use this often with graduate students who are trying to profile terrorist and non-state actor organizations, um, but there's lots of different uses. Content is downloadable. It's very important to note that only five users can use it at a time, so if you are using the resource, make use of it and then log out so that the next party can take a look. I3 Connect um, provides updates on clean technology investments, um, including IPOs, M&A, business relationships, and all kinds of financing activity around clean technology. Um, it's a great resource for any research into clean tech, um, and I think it could be particularly useful for entre entrepreneurship students um, who are trying to launch a green technology of their own because um, it's going to show top investors and deals um, that they may want to you know, target. Um, it also delves into research for various clean tech sectors. So for example, if you're looking into information on um, alternative proteins, uh, there's a whole sector on alternative proteins, sort of like the big brands, what's happening, where the investment money is going, um, and could be really helpful for any clean tech um, entrepreneurship or investment. So if you've just been awarded a Fulbright in Ethiopia, and you need to brush up on your Amharic, the library has a database just for you. Pronunciator has 163 languages that you can learn online. So kind of move over Babel and Rosetta Stone because the library has this for you. You can see from the slide, it goes from Afrikaans to languages I'm not even sure where they speak. So have a look at Pronunciator. If you want to brush up your language skills, you can create an account and then you can follow your progress and move on to the next level. 
Press Reader is one of my favorite databases. So Press Reader is a database that allows you to read magazines and newspapers in full color with the images. We might have access to these newspapers and magazines in another database, but they usually lack those images, which make magazines so much fun. The library has over 400 titles with both national and international coverage, and the most recent two months are available. Categories include hobbies, lifestyle, cooking, pets, home and garden, health and fitness, and plenty more. We have publications from 102 52 countries and 65 languages available. This is fun for browsing popular titles, practicing a language, or keeping up with news from home. I really like using it for good housekeeping and Cosmo. So VoxGov is one of my favorite resources for government information. So government information tends to be spread across multiple websites and each branch of government publishes information differently. So having one comprehensive place to search all government publications is really, really valuable. Now, part of what makes this database super fantastic is how thorough they are with the metadata. So here I've done a search on artificial intelligence and I've pulled up the limiter for content type. And you can see how many specific types of content you can isolate your search to. So one of the features I use the most are reports and publications, and this will give you GAO, CRS, Inspector generals, like anybody who's writing a comprehensive report on the topic from across branches of government and across um, institutions in one place. Cabells is a great resource for um, particularly our new faculty. We noticed we had some new faculty um, registrants for this session uh, to find more information about where to publish, uh, particularly in the fields of sciences and social sciences. Uh, it consists of two products. The first is called Journalytics, which has information about journals. So that information includes how to submit, how many articles are invited and accepted. So you can see some of this in the screenshot. I've screenshotted their information sheet for college and research libraries, uh, which is a journal in our field. Um, information on how the review is conducted, they also have a site index, which is uh, their journal level citation index through site AI um, that shows supporting and contrasting citations as well as mentions. There's also a lot of alt metrics. So mentions in social media, on blogs and through Mendeley. And then their predatory product um, lists journals that you wanna stay away from that have violated, um, you know, sort of the rules of publishing, I guess. So many people might be familiar with the Shoah Foundation and their archive of interviews with survivors of the Holocaust, but the archive has now been expanded to include um, the more recent instances like the anti-Rohingya mass violence. And it has includes historical genocides from Nanjing to uh, to to uh, the war in Bosnia. So um, th these are uh, videos. They are great primary source material. And I'm really sorry I forgot to lock up the cat. It's of the world. We have so many kinds of birds. This database has almost 11,000 species and over 30 million images of all kinds of birds. This comes from the Cornell Ornithology Lab. This is their online version of that data or list. Um, it has a thorough list of all kinds of species information, including conservation status, habitat distribution, and priorities for future research. So here I have an image of the bald eagle. You can search by common or scientific name. You can search by conservation status. And then if you scroll down further here, you can see all kinds of information about the species. So this is a really fun database to nerd out about birds.
Criminal Justice Abstracts. So this might be one of the most mainstream databases I decided to cover, but it's a robust search environment for all sorts of criminal justice research topics, which are very popular with many of our students. Um, the coverage is dominated by peer-reviewed journals, but there are also trade journals and um, magazines represented. Uh, you can see here that they also pull out content from the Associated Press videos, which can be interesting to students to see news coverage and around the world about their particular topic. I also use it for its powerful and well-maintained subject index. So as students are developing their vocabulary around their research topic of interest, that index can help them understand the, the jargon from the particular fields that are looking at criminal justice and criminology research and to hone in on articles that are really centrally themed around the topic and not just ones that mention the keyword. Global financial data is the most complete collection of historical and current financial and economic data. Um, it provides um, this data for more than 200 countries, um, and some data sets are tracked as far back as the 13th century. You can search over 5,000 different indices types uh, by country, series type, sector. Um, and it's commonly used to retrieve long runs of historical, financial, and economic series, such as interest rates, exchange rates, inflation data, fixed income rates, and commodity prices. Um, they also have this cool thing that like tracks events in time. And so you can match those two fluctuations in the market. Um, and what I've shown here is uh, the consumer price index inflation rate for Argentina Oh gosh, I think it's back to the you know 1900s. I'm sorry, the 1800s uh, through present. So you can see that really like dramatic jump um, in the 90s, 2000s. So the Peace Corps Community Archive is actually our very own database here at AU. It was established in 2013 by Pat Wand. Many of you knew Pat as the American University librarian, and unfortunately, she recently passed away. But part of her legacy here is that we collect and preserve materials that document the experiences and impact of people who served in the Peace Corps. It's both a digital and physical collection, and includes things like correspondence and diaries, scrapbooks, and even some sound recordings. We actively are soliciting donations from returned Peace Corps volunteers. So if you have, if you are one or you have friends and family who are, please do consider donating to the archives. It's a really wonderful primary source for our students who are studying the Kennedy administration or anything of the activists of the 60s. Very short introductions, as it sounds, are concisely written books on a variety of topics. Um, I use this to refresh my memory or learn about something new on any kind of topic. I am the science librarian, but I don't have a background in all the sciences. So this is a fun and easy way to catch up before I talk with students and to work with you all. Um, we have a lot of these books, over 800 short ebooks, as well as physical copies. Um, they, physical copies are available on the first floor of the library, and all of the physical and ebooks are indexed in our catalog, so you can search by the series tag to find all of them. They cover all kinds of topics, including art and humanities, medicine and health, social sciences, and they have some fun topics like this science and religion, which is pretty new. ProQuest Congressional. So as I promised, I really enjoy government documents, but the, the Congress of the United States is responsible for all sorts of policy areas that touch everything from science to trade to economics. So even if you're not a government researcher, there's probably a government document put out by the Congress that is relevant to you. 
The coverage here begins in 1776 with bills and laws and comes all the way up to the present. Um, as you can imagine, that is a large amount of information and content. And so part of what makes this data or this database powerful is the clear metadata. So one of the things you can search for is maps. And so this screenshot is of uh, peanut production in 1929. It's buried deep in a report that the Federal Trade Commission issued to Congress upon request, but the metadata makes it discoverable despite its um, convoluted location. E-Marketer Insider Intelligence is a great tool for researching how people spend their time and money online. It covers a number of industries, but its bread and butter is really um, digital marketing, social media, um, digital advertising. Um, and it provides analysis, market data, statistics on internet, e-commerce, online marketing, social media, and emerging tech as well. Um, so one of its great strengths is its reports and charts. Um, it has shorter um, articles on like recent trends and observations, but its reports are pretty in depth. So I've screenshotted uh, the opening page to uh, for its report on TikTok, TikTok, excuse me, commerce in 2023, and you can see one of the charts here is showing where adults are likely likely to make purchases directly. Um, Gen Z versus total. Um, we can see Instagrams up there, YouTube, and then TikTok. So in a few moments, Katie's going to tell you a, about consumer reports, where that's where you can find what kind of appliance you should buy or which car you should buy. But we also have Consumer Checkbook, which is a crowdsourced subscriber reviews of businesses and services. So this won't tell you which car to buy, but it will tell you where you can have it serviced. I have up here in screenshot. The first thing I would do would be read the helpful articles. If I'm looking for a plumber, this will give me many ideas about the kinds of questions I should ask and what I should consider before hiring one. I can also set the area served uh, here in Northwest DC. I can checkbook actually gives rates, gives a check mark for quality and a check mark for price. And so I can use that as a filter and tell me, show, only show me plumbers that have both quality and good price. And then I can read the re reviews and see what percentage the reviewers have assigned to the various ranking options. Okay, Gale in Context Environmental Studies is probably the most normal database I'm going to cover today. Um, it provides a variety of background information sources on over 450 issues. So you search by issue, not by specific topic, um, but there is a topic finder that connects your original search with more topics. Um, so this offers news, information, overviews, case studies, videos, unique commentaries, primary source documents, and statistics. So it's got all kinds of information on these issues that they group together. You can search by keyword or browse by topic to get this variety of sources, um, and they're all related to environmental topics. This is a great resource for non-science majors who are researching environmental topics. Pine Online is one of my favorite legal research databases. So some of the primary uh, or prominent uh, players in the legal research field are LexisNexis and Westlaw. Hein carves out a niche for itself by caring deeply about the historical record of legal documents. So if there's a collection that they cover, whether it's the US code, the federal register, or a law journal, they're going to start with volume one, issue one, and digitize the content moving forward. So wearing my I'm on the socio-historical committee hat, I really like this database. They also do a good job of, of grouping collections so that researchers can look across these different types of documents, but in one specific field. So in the screenshot, I've pulled out the gun regulation and legislation in America box, which is another topic that students are often researching. And you can see the combination of CRS reports, hearing Supreme Court briefs, and scholarly articles in one place. 
Global Data Explorer um, provides both company and industry profiles and in depth for both, and then very in depth country pestle reports. So uh, the pestle analysis is a way to um, you know, analyze sort of what's going on in a country. For those who don't know the acronym, it stands for political, economic, social, um, technological, legal, and environmental. So looking at all of those factors in a given country. Um, this is actually the updated version of a database called MarketLine. Um, and what sets it apart from MarketLine is its alternative data. So it has social media and job analytics. I've screenshotted their social media analytics um, dashboard here. Um, and you can see this is, I think we're looking at topics that are trending on social media um, in a given industry. And so it's just another way to kind of give you a more holistic picture of what's going on in a given industry um, with social media analytics. So most of you know about Ancestry.com, but perhaps you didn't know you can use it through our library database. It is the library edition of Ancestry, which means you can find all the same good stuff you can find on your family if you subscribe yourself, but you can't produce the family trees and the various uh, outputs that you can do to, from the personal edition. This is actually a very valuable uh, primary source document for students. Uh, we have the Social Security Death Index if you're trying to de determine when a person passed away. We also have border crossing and trans-ocean ship records, which are of interest. The screenshot I have here is Alice Paul's passport application. She went to England where she met the Pankhurst family and became a great suffragist. All right, Sage Research Methods Online is a newer resource. So it is a collection of books, journal articles, case studies, video and reference materials published by Sage Publications on research methods and design. It includes research video, market research, practical research skills, and academic skills, um, data science, big data analytics, and digital methods. Um, the methods map is a option and it visually shows how research methods are related. The project planner provides a step-by-step -step guidance on how to perform your project. And which stats test is a multiple choice test that can help you determine which statistical method is best for your data. It covers business humanities, science, and social science research methods. Annual reviews. So earlier, Clarissa talked about very short introductions. Um, and annual reviews can provide a similar function, but with a little more depth on some detailed research questions. So when I'm working with students, I often find that they get overwhelmed trying to pull down peer-reviewed journal articles on their topic of interest and make sense of all the research that's out there. And so annual reviews can provide a really valuable on-ramp for them. So if they're looking to understand the state of the literature, it's not that they aren't going to then go out and read the individual journal articles that are referenced here or use the, the sort of language skills about a, a discipline that they build by reading this article, but it gives them a foundation from being a total novice in an area to being expected to engage with the resource in a detailed way. So it's also interesting to note that they're a non-profit publisher and that they are working on a subscribe to open model. So this kind of on-ramp can be available to everyone. Our DeGroyder ebook collection is a a new ebook collection that we wanted to tout during this session. It vastly expands our access to university press ebooks um, and includes titles from uh, Central European Press, Cornell, Rutgers, Stanford, um, University of Hawaii, University of Texas, Columbia, Duke, uh, et cetera. So it consists of over 4,000 titles um, and includes a complete front list collection of, of these university presses. And we also have unlimited access to digitize and enhanced, uh, their digitize and enhanced backlist. Um, so it's a great new resource that we just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of.
line, which is World Development Indicators, is one of my most favorite databases. It has what you would expect from the World Bank, the GDP, and the Gini coefficient, but it has almost 1,500 other indicators that are so useful if you're in into any kind of study of education, political participation, and social attitudes, and much more. Uh, you can create downloadable spreadsheet uh, by choosing the countries you want to study and then choosing your indicators and your date range. Some of the data actually goes back to the 60s. You can't expect to find every data point for every country, but it will give you some insight into, into something like <clears throat> political participation from women. You can find there's an indicator for the number of women in the legislature, there's indicators for whether women think it's okay for their husbands to beat them. There are indicators for the type of fuel that they use to cook. It, it, it's just something that's really worth taking a look at and uh, thinking outside the box of your, your research. Jove is the Journal of Visualized Experiments. It has thousands of science videos for lab work and science concepts. It's great as a supplementary resource for students or anyone who can't get into a lab, um, or if you only have a few materials, so you want to really know the procedure before you perform the experiment. Um, Jove has a willingness or Joe will map videos to your course syllabus, um, which is extra valuable and not used enough at AU is a service we pay for. So please connect the videos. Um, Joe has both a research and education side, which makes it valuable for learners and practitioners. Research, the research side includes traditional academic articles with video interviews or a demonstration of the concepts, which is also really cool. CQ Congress Collection. So we have quite a few databases that are published by CQ Congressional Quarterly. And I wanted to sort of draw attention to this one specifically. You can find biographical information about every member of Congress from 1945 to the present. Um, they have every floor vote from 1969 to the present, and then they've identified what they consider key votes that go from 1945. Um, you can create customizable reports on member alignment. So if you want to find a particular member and see how they vote in sync with other members from their state, with other members from their party, with um, somebody else of your choosing, as well as sort of scores from various interest groups about how much that interest group thinks that their votes align with their values. Um, results are accompanied by recommendations from reports on related topics. And then you can see here the U.S. House vote on the D.C. statehood bill from 2020. MSCI ESG Manager is a set of positive and negative environmental, social, and governance performance indicators applied to a set of publicly traded companies. So they're rating over a thousand companies and they rate their highest ranking is a AAA, their lowest is a triple C. Um, their reports are quite in-depth. They can be up to or close to 100 pages. Um, uh, and they rate industries as well as companies um, in sort of this broader look at an industry. So what I've grabbed here in this screenshot is just like the tear sheet for the report on Meta. And you can see um, it did receive a triple C, which is their lowest ranking. Um, and I read it when I was grabbing the screenshot. I can't exactly remember why, but I think it had to do with um, uh, some of the stuff that happened with Cambridge Analytica um, and the layoffs that are happening now, I believe. So American History and Video is just one of the many streaming services we have. Uh, Clarissa will talk about one a little later too, that can bring history alive for your students. In American history and video, we have over 10,000 seminal historical moments that are captured on film. You can watch great speeches and uh, see the pre-TV newsreels that were shown in movie theaters, which are among my most favorite, because we can tell our students that 
the Klan marched down Pennsylvania Avenue in the 1920s in a parade. But with American History and Video, they can actually see it. They can also see General Patton in a little tank clearing the World War I bonus army encampment, which was on the banks of the Anacostia. So I think the more interesting we can make history for our students, the more we can bring it alive, it'll be better for all of us. Simply Analytics is a really fun, user-friendly, easy-to-use web-based mapping analytics and data visualization tool. But what's really cool about it is that it has the 50,000 plus data value or variables. Um, and it makes it easy for anyone to create interactive maps and reports. Um, and these data val variables have a bunch of different demographic, business, and marketing aspects to it. I created this map in like less than five minutes doing just percent of educational attainment of a bachelor's degree. And I was able to center the map on my home county of McHenry County, Illinois. Um, and I did that in under five minutes. So it's really fun tool um, to play around with, but what's really valuable is that data variables. So ICPSR is a consortium for data preservation and access. AU is a member institution and they're a, one of 750. Um, and there are 250,000 plus research data files in there on the social and behavioral sciences. You can search by keyword in the full record of the, the data set, or you can look simply by variables to try to identify sets that have particular variables of interest and then try to cross-reference other questions that were asked within that same data set. Um, there's some really great filters for finding the restriction type of the data. So is this something that's public use or are you going to need IRB approval to have access? Um, you can filter by data type if it's qualitative, quantitative, or GIS. Um, the time period of the study, the methodology, was it longitudinal or, or point in time, um, who the funding agency was, and so on. I find students use this for their methodology classes and faculty use it to satisfy grant requirements for preserving their data. Mintel is a uh, service that provides research on consumer products and services. Um, it provides research reports um, that again are quite in depth, um, you know, 50 to 80 pages sometimes uh, on a given product um, or market uh, as well as uh, shorter observations, trends. Um, its strength is really in its demographics. Uh, so it finally slices and dices the consumer markets into distinct um, demographic categories. Um, and it also has really great consumer data um, through its data book, which I've grabbed uh, just a screenshot here. This is from their marketing to millennials um, uh, report, and we can see this is a millennial self-perception. Um, so it's kind of akin to the data that you'll get in Simmons, but a lot easier to use. It's not as in-depth. There's not as much there as Simmons, but um, it can be a good substitute uh, when where possible. So we have a whole database of the newsletters that were published by and for the uh, Japanese Americans who were forcibly removed from their homes into relocation camps. These newsletters are really a fascinating glimpse at the camp. I'm sure they were likely censored, but it does show you the life and times of what they were uh, experiencing in, in the camps. They're fully searchable. My friend's father was in Manzanar, so I searched his name and found that he had been on the baseball team there. But um, the, I just happened to pull this one issue of the Topaz Times and the lead off article is about the Supreme Court case challenging the legality of the relocation camps. But then there was also a notice that there was a war fund campaign and they were inviting residents to donate to the war fund, which is, I have no words. 
Films on Demand is a database where we keep collections of other films that we have purchased or subscribed to. Um, this database includes the collections, great speeches, video series, world cinema collection, feature films for education, archival films and newsreel collection, and thousands of individually purchased titles. This is a great place to find information um, as well as it provides a transcript on the side. Um, you can go there to search just like what's hot right now. They had a Shakespeare summer collection series um, or this six minute video about book bands. So it's a great place to kind of help supplement anything you're instructing and to find some videos. So I poll Roper Express is my go-to when I have students who are interested in polling information. So a lot of news organizations have their polling information that's reported on, but maybe not the raw data, and they're spread across multiple sites. So I poll gives you a place to look for major collectors of survey and opinion data all in one place. So this is going to include Roper, Gallup, the Princeton Survey Research Associates, Pew, CBS News, AARP, the Kaiser Family Foundation, and on and on, right, all in one place. It's really important to notice some of the filters because the degree of availability in terms of being able to look at the code book or the questionnaire to download the full data set really varies by, by survey. So filtering to um, just the one, uh, to ones that are downloadable can be really helpful. I found this question on how often you use not having your morning coffee yet as an excuse for being tired. Um, and noticed that if you look at the questionnaire, there's a series of demographic questions. So you can filter this by generation. Gen Z does this more often than boomers. Um, but there are also several questions about sports fandom. So it might be an interesting lesson on when correlation might be fun, but not helpful if, uh, the the coffee drinking habits of baseball and hockey fans are different. Uh, the Wall Street Journal is one of the newspapers that is sort of newer in our um, uh, to the library. So we do have um, full web access to the Wall Street Journal. In addition to, and this kind of gives me an opportunity to mention that in, we have this in addition to the New York Times. Um, the Washington Post and the Financial Times. So you do not need to maintain your own subscriptions to these papers. Um, you can access everything through the library. Um, once you get to the database through the library website, uh, if you select it in our database list, it's gonna take you to um, instructions on how to register for an account. It works similarly across these four different papers. Um, the Journal, the New York Times, Washington Post, and Financial Times. Um, and once you register, you can access it wherever you are. You don't need to go through the library. Um, and with the Wall Street Journal, I know you can also access the app. Um, so you'll have full access to the mobile app as well. Um, one of the things I think is pretty cool about our subscription to the Wall Street Journal is that um, you can see here in the screenshot, this is the English edition, but we also have the Chinese language and Japanese language um, editions as well. Um, I think this, mine may be stopped and I may be closer to a minute. I think uh, my timer stopped. So I'm gonna, I'm just wrap it up there. Yeah, my screen froze. I apologize about that. Well, I neither speak nor read Hebrew, but I thought this was a really cool database. It has over 126,000 searchable books uh, on the study of ancient and modern Judaica, including philosophy, religion, thought, and culture. So if you're interested in uh, Judaica, this is definitely a place to visit. O'Reilly Online Learning used to be called Safari. Um, but it's known best for its technology and coding books. Um, it is tech and coding heavy, but um, has books, audiobooks, playlists of videos. It has courses and a certification system, as well as you can search um, quick answers to tech questions, and it provides case studies. 
not only does it have technology books, but it also has some weird niche business and self-help books, such as All Pride, No Ego, and Mindfulness for the Wandering Mind. All of these books are indexed in our library catalog, so you can find them through our catalog as well. You don't need to just search this database to see if we happen to have what you're looking for. All right, I have learned that if I open the chat, it freezes the, the PowerPoint, so I'm going to stop doing that. Um, policy file, the screenshot here may look familiar to you if you're familiar with any of the ProQuest databases, but this is differentiated from those for its content. So here we have white papers and gray literature from think tanks and government organizations, NGOs, research institutes from 1990 to the present, and that's a pretty valuable date range because those may sound like things you can find through a Google search, but often these sorts of organizations only have their most recent reports sort of easily available online. So being able to get the scope of their work is really valuable. There are two filters here that I want to draw your attention to. One is the organizational name. I think one thing that um, especially novice researchers in a particular area may have trouble with is this idea of who cares, right? Who's involved in this conversation and being able to see a list of organization names helps. And then the organizational political leaning can provide just a little sense of um, who that group is and where they're generally thought to be on that left-right spectrum. The conference board, I think, is an under underused, um, not well known about resource uh, that I'm I'm trying to advertise more widely. Um, it provides business insights um, for leaders navigating um, these like critical issues of our time. It's a nonprofit. Uh, it was it's headquartered in Manhattan and it was founded uh, way back in 1919. So it's been around for a long time. Um, and it provides economic data and global insights that are frequently quoted in media. And it'll show examples of what organizations are doing to remain competitive in a rapidly changing environment. It's kind of organized into centers. So the centers are economic development, economy, strategy, and finance, ESG, human capital, and marketing and communications. You can also browse by trending topics such as like AI or by content type. Um, and it has data such as um, CEO confidence levels. Um, so there's really just a lot there. It's a great resource. So if you are an opera buff, we have the database for you. Whether your taste is Verdi or Philip Glass, it's, it's covered in the Met. Um, over 800 full-length performances. Um, it's online streaming database. Um, you can see my... Beirut, Leontine Price, uh, her fair world, fair world performance, as well as uh, current productions. Okay, Sage Data used to be called Data Planet. Um, it includes a lot of numbers in a fun and easy way to find and play with them. Um, it has access to 550 plus U.S. and international data databases um, through one platform. Um, data can be downloaded or you can create custom visualizations. So again, more maps um, or trend charts. There's also a data basics tab, which will explain topics of data literacy, including searching, using, and interpreting data. Um, you can use it to search by subject, source, or location, um, or you can use a search bar to search for something specific. So this is a really cool tool to find all kinds of data. Policy map. So I'm going to do a quick call back to Clarissa's description of Simply Analytics and note that, yes, there is some repetition here. So much like Simply Analytics, this gives users the ability to pull reports, data tables, and populate information on a map. Um, the data sources, so why have two, right? So the data sources can have some overlap, especially those public available census reports and other government data. But each of these databases then has its own sort of relationship with private data providers, be that a um, a for-profit company or a nonprofit company or individual researchers who are maybe wanting to upload data into a space that can be 
readable on a map. So if you're not finding what you're looking for on one platform, jump to another. Um, I've also had some use cases with some of the, what they have, these sort of pre packaged reports that compile data from multiple sources based on a geography of your choosing. Some health study students have been able to put together those health reports on a location that that pulls that and then they map that to their actual work in the community to see where data has limits for understanding a community. Pitchbook um, tracks the private and public equity markets. It provides data and information on the venture capital, private equity, and M&A landscape. Um, and it includes information about funds, limited partners, service providers, founders, investors, and buyers. So I believe its greatest value is the ability to create really customized spreadsheets of information on these sectors. Um, it also has research reports on emerging tech, because as you can imagine, a lot of what uh, these private investors are investing in is emerging tech. So for anyone um, in that space, it can be really helpful. Um, and we also now have access through our subscription to Morningstar Institutional Equity Research. Um, this replaces our previous subscription to Value Line. And another note is that the analysts will work with individual researchers to access the data they need that might not be on the platform. So they're really helpful. Their chat service is also really helpful. Um, but downloads are very limited, unfortunately. So you can contact me if you have any questions about downloads. So what are the most robust collections that we have at AU is our newspaper collections. And I just pulled out the historical African-American newspapers online as an example. I don't expect you to be able to read all these because there's so many and there's so um, there's such a depth here. Uh, we have newspapers from the Afri African American community back to 1827. Uh, if you want to, if you have a student who's looking at the Scottsboro trials, these are the places to look. Um, if you want to look at the desegregation of the military, uh, there are newspaper articles in the New York Amsterdam News that follow it very carefully. So one of my favorite assignments is to ask students to find an event or a person in a in a, one of the major newspapers, uh, major circulation newspapers and compare it to the coverage in the black community. I know I'm going to go over on this one, so I'll be brief on my other ones. Um, Katie and I have worked very carefully on our FAQs about the newspaper collection. So FAQs in the library, go to the homepage under research assistance, FAQs, you can find out about, there's a FAQ on how to do newspaper research because it is different from searching journals because there is no indexing by keyword. So you have to use the words that they would be using in the newspaper at the time. Thank you. Okay, STOAP three journals are 11 open access journals in high energy physics. Over 3000 libraries in 44 countries contribute to this project for open access articles in physics with no cost to authors. Copyright stays with the authors too. Um, not applicable to many faculty here, but I want us to know about it because AU helps sponsor this project and it's a really cool tool. So Westlaw Campus Research is something I wanted to draw your attention to because I get a lot of questions about, does the library have access to Westlaw? Can I do case law research at AU? And we don't have the Westlaw product that you might be familiar with if you have done legal research for a government agency or a law firm. Westlaw Campus Research, however, provides so much similar content and functionality. So it's important to know what the defaults are when you log into a database like this, because when you're doing legal research, jurisdiction is everything. So the default here is to all federal, and then your search results really prioritize cases at the top. So if you're looking for statutes, if you're looking for something happening in a particular state, you'll need to change those default settings. I also want to draw your attention to those little yellow flags next to the case names, and that's called a key site. And that allows you to trace the history of the case 
and the trajectory of the case. So how does that case get treated by further future courts, rather higher up in the appeals process, or how future cases either tweak, change, or overrule the ruling in that case? Stage business cases um, I, are another uh, resource that I really like to tout. Um, I have a, I get a lot of requests for Harvard Business Press business cases. Um, we do have access to some, but not many, and they tend to not be super current. Um, but obviously, they've got great, great brand recognition. But when I direct uh, faculty who are asking for the Harvard cases, to Sage, they're usually quite happy with Sage as a substitute. Um, Sage provides over 5,000 business cases in a really wide range of topics, and they also include teacher's notes. If you wanted to access the teacher's notes, you can contact me and I'll send you um, instructions for those, but they're quite topical, um, really current, and uh, a great resource to know about if you're looking for business cases. So if you need primary source material about material about the LGBTQ community, this is the place to go. Uh, there are many uh, scanned examples of what librarians like to call ephemera, newspapers, pamphlets, organizational papers, manuscripts, the kind of thing that's difficult to, to find in the uh, secondary literature. So um, it's it's all right there and easy to search. Okay, if you've ever wanted to see somebody get a therapy session, this is your database. Psych Therapy offers over 300 videos of actual therapy sessions taking place um, with full text transcriptions to make for easy searching, as well as you can filter by gender of therapist, gender of patient, um, date of the video, other features or search by approach if taken during the um, session. Um, videos can be cut for use in classrooms. Videos are for educational purposes only. Every time you log in, you will be required to agree to certain use requirements. Um, so these are for educational purposes and confidentiality is very important when using this database. So Dimensions is a newer database and if you are interested in its use, I recommend reaching out to our scholarly communications librarian, Rachel Borchardt, but we wanted to include it here to make sure you know about it. Um, the database measures impact of scholarly research across multiple, well, dimensions. Um, so here we have a screenshot of American University, sorry, you're sneering at my pun, um, where we can see at the institutional level, our production, the kinds of publications we're putting out, the number of data sets that we have produced, the grant funding we've received. You can also do this kind of searching at an article level or an individual level. I've had faculty use this as um, external reviewers to get a better sense of the, um, the outputs of the person that they're being asked to comment on their scholarly record. And what's interesting here is that it really tracks some impacts beyond the academy. So we can see where somebody's research has shown up in policy documents um, and in news. My Trademark Ed, another um, newer resource that we've recently added, uh, it's a tool for learning about trademarks, marketing, and branding. It consists of a series of video tutorials. Um, there are three sections, and they include video tutorials. Um, it, they comprise their trademark. 101, 102, and 103 products. So this is what the uh, My Trademark Ed consists of, is these three videos. Um, and they take users um, from the fundamentals of marketing and choosing the perfect trademark to responding to um, US PTO office actions, and they really cut through the legal jargon. So another great resource for any um, student, like entrepreneurship students who are trying to launch something and trademark a product. So here's another way to make history come alive for your students. Um, the History Makers is an oral history archive of uh, prominent, historically significant African-Americans. And um, it includes artists, po politicians, activists, judges. There are more than, 
almost 150,000 stories in this database, which you can search and then view online. One of my favorites in here is one of our former city council members, Dr. Frank Smith, and he was being interviewed about Marion Barry. And his, his comments and his observations were insightful and touching, and I thought it was a, a very important for those of us who are interested in DC history to watch. Okay, Grismec's Animal Life Encyclopedia is a giant encyclopedia about all things animal. It has been updated from the original 1960 edition in Germany. Um, there are 16 volumes, including one index, so 17 total. Volumes are organized by taxonomy from lower metazoans and lesser deuterostomes to five whole volumes on mammals, which are separated by order, family, and then subfamily. This is a really cool way to learn a lot about not just like the whole life of planet Earth, um, but it's really cool how it's organized. And then you can search specifics within kind of the families. So it's not going to be like that bird database that's species specific, um, but the subfamily is really helpful. So EIU country reports are um, something that I use very frequently with students taking a comparative politics course, especially students who may be encountering sort of the structure and organization of countries outside of the US for the first time. It's really digestible and gives you this combination of economic and political situation in a given country. So if a student needs to understand the political system, this is their first step, right? We're gonna move into peer reviewed journal articles later, but this is gonna help the student understand the election cycles, the political system, who the parties are, who the leaders are, right? So we're building up our keyword search and our knowledge using this report. Um, one of the really great features here too is that the reports for each country tend to come out quarterly and you can see there at the top left of the screen capture you can actually select your date and kind of take a look at a particular volatile moment in a particular country's history and see how were we reporting on that at that time. IDC um, publishes uh, market forecast industry analyses, case studies, so it's another case study uh, resource, and toolkits on tech and emerging tech. So you can read reports from the perspective of a buyer. So I don't know if anyone from OIT is um, in this session, um, or a seller. So if you're creating a product, trying to launch something, um, how you could sell the product, how you could sell this emerging technology. Um, they have something they call um, marketscapes, which are unbiased reviews of technology suppliers. And then for people who are selling technology, uh, they have maturity scapes, which describes the five stages of maturity for a technology. Um, they also have benchmarks for market distribution, um, how to plan for your technology. Um, this resource replaces our previous subscription to Gartner. So if you used Gartner at a previous institution or previously at AU, um, IDC is what you're going to want to use now. So if you would rather have a root canal than listen to the Met Opera, how about a little jelly roll? So we have 23,600 tracks of jazz that you can listen to. This is, represents over 3,000 albums and over 500 artists. So um, if you're into jazz, we have the database for you. Climate Extra is a database collecting news coverage of climate policy developments across the breadth of the federal government and then a little bit beyond. Um, so Climate Extra is the successor to Inside EPA slash climate, if you're used to that database, now it's just Climate Extra. Um, Daily news is updated throughout the day. Um, it has current quick read highlights, which are great for learning a new topic or student, students that aren't familiar with the conversation or they're just getting ideas. 
um, Climate Extra Weekly is their weekly newsletter, which highlights information and analysis of climate policy information topics. And you can search by topic as well as just that home with all of the highlights. So Oxford Handbooks Online is another one of those kinds of on-ramp type resources that we have talked about with very short introductions and annual reviews. I would sort of situate this in between the two. Um, annual review articles tend to ask a very specific research question and then take a look at the literature that exists on those. Very short introductions are exactly what they're labeled to be. And then handbooks can kind of hit that sweet spot in between. So the coverage we have runs from 2004 to the present. Um, one of the nicer features, and many of our databases do this really, but if you're looking at a handbook article, you'll see that AU library find it icon that sort of integrates into the bibliography. So once you've kind of gotten a sense of the literature based on the the handbook article, you can link out to those full text journal articles from within. Um, so wanted to make sure everyone's aware that you have access to consumer reports through the AU library. Um, this kind of dovetails with one of the resources Catherine mentioned um, earlier in our presentation, it's Washington Consumers Checkbook, I believe it's called, or some combination of those words. Um, so, this provides online access to their full text reviews and advice on consumer products and services. So um, you may use some another product, maybe something like Wirecutter, which I also use and like, but Wirecutter does rely on referral links. So they may be more inclined to recommend products that have referral links over, over those that don't. So that can introduce some bias in their reviews. Um, Consumer Reports has been around forever. It's very reliable. It's a nonprofit um, and it's a great resource. So our students are very aware of spying on people like Zuckerberg is looking at us and collecting our data, but they may not be aware that this has gone on in our country for decades. We have six separate databases that document in great detail the extent of the FBI's infiltration of organizations that J. Edgar Hoover deemed radical. These reports tell shockingly of the FBI's domestic spying, which was done at taxpayer expense, on citizens engaged in lawful activity. So we have uh, what he considered radicals, um, African Americans, definitely radicals. The Freedom Riders are my favorite one of these databases because it tells you the great detail because it shows you the reports of the paid informants who rode on the buses with the freedom riders and the detail is you'd be like katie got on the bus at 605 with Catherine, and then they met olivia two stops later it was that level of detail that the the government was spying on its people also looked at the um liberation movement in africa and also the American Indian movement. So if you're interested in any of those kinds of times in our country, these declassified files are fascinating. Okay, and finally, the New York Academy of Sciences archive. It is no longer coming soon. We got the link on Monday, it is here. Um, it has 200 years of primary source documents covering a range of subjects, including botany, chemistry, civil slash human rights, climate science, education in the sciences, and environmental studies. Um, science archives are really rare, so this is especially exciting. Um, the highlights of the archive include field notes, records, and maps from the Academy's three-decade scientific survey of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, documents by the Committee on the Human Rights of Scientists, records of the Harbor Project and its impact on industrial pollution, and works by botanist Nathaniel Lord Britton and the New York Botanical Gardens. So this is really cool. 
Okay, so our final slide is to talk about audience suggestions. So I'm going to stop screen sharing now so we can hopefully see a bit more of our community here. Um, and I will catch back up on what's been happening in the chat. Um, so let us know. What databases do you use the most that you find to be treasures within our collection that you wish other people knew about? Or if you have questions about some of the databases we presented on as well. Oh, wonderful. Glad we could. Uh, that was our entire goal was to let you to know that some of these things existed. Now, if you go to the A to Z link for the library's database collections, you will see more than 600 listed. So this is literally a tenth of what we have access to. Um, so we really wanted to just sort of get us out of our ruts and get you excited about research maybe you could do. Um, is it sufficient to go to the AU library website to gain access? Yes, absolutely. And that's exactly where you should start. So if you click on a resource through our website, it's going to route you through an, an open Athens authentication. And so for you, that's going to look like any other AU login, right? Where you log into the portal, you get that duo push notification. And once you've done that once, it's going to stay active throughout the sort of the time you're online for that day. Um, but yeah, so if you were to Google one of these database titles and go directly to the vendor, you might have a harder time getting in. So if you go through the library website, that is going to guarantee access for you. And there was a question earlier in the chat about who can access this and everything that we've described here is available to anyone with who's a current student, faculty, or staff, and has an AUID. The one teeny tiny exception is Westlaw Campus Research is not available to the law school or to the Office of General Counsel because they have access to a different Westlaw product. So it's a research tool, not a legal practice tool, and West gets very picky about who's using that. No audience suggestions? What is your absolute favorite database that you wish more people were using? Too many to choose a favorite. Okay. I love that. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, we yeah, had yeah. that same problem, right? We were like, okay, 60, no big deal. But then it's sort of like, okay, there's some really great ones that didn't make the cut and they should have. Yeah. I'd like to make another plug for our FAQs. Uh, you go to the library's homepage and under research assistance, which is the same way you ex go to the list of databases. But our FAQs cover a wide variety of, like if you want to know about how to even find out about Zotero or way beyond just databases and research. Yes, the 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 state and countries, so... I know I, I tend to sort of gravitate towards Access World News if I'm looking for international news coverage and also some of the states. Um, does anybody else have newspaper? And that's why that FAQ about newspapers is so important because for all the innovation of the internet, compiling news sources from around the world has is a really interesting and competitive game and we don't unfortunately have a one-stop shop solution mm -hmm. there's a, it, has 156 countries it might only have like one newspaper or one magazine but it's got something right absolutely and there is an faq on how do i find newspapers online that links to all many other faqs we have a fantastic collection of newspapers. There are many more out there than just newspapers.com. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Katie. Katie put that FAQ about news in the chat. So who was keeping score? I think I might have gone over my time the most. So I get... <laughs> I did the best. I you did the best. Can. Clarissa was on it. She <laughs> stayed on her on her timer. Yeah. So did anybody have any questions about, we went so quickly about any of the databases? 
I like Hannah's comment and it's worth sort of underscoring that yes, yeah, students and I think also faculty and staff can be a little shocked at how much we spend on databases. Um, so much of the information that we, I call it like information for daily living, like our Google Maps and um, restaurant recommendations, it's all just sort of free, right? But the in-depth information written by and for experts can be very expensive to acquire. And so the library is spending a lot of money on your behalf. <laughs> But no, yes, we will. Um, so I we will make sure that CTRL has the 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 slide presentation so that it can be added to the page. Um, and if you go to I will pull up our A to Z list one more time into the chat. Um, you can always grab links from there uh, to add to your syllabus or your Canvas page. And if you have questions, I, I tell students sometimes one of the great uses of the AU library chat feature is to just tell the librarian, this is my research question, or there are a couple of databases you might recommend, right? Because it can be really challenging to sift through 600 different databases or even 60, right? To say, these are the ones I need to cover. Um, so that's what that chat box is for. We'll help you. And also we have the subject guides, which you also access from research assistants that will give you the librarians have chosen the top databases for each major subject area that we, we offer so that you probably wouldn't want to go to the A to Z list if you didn't know which database you wanted, because how would you scroll through 600 of them? So if you start with the subject guides, that's useful. And there's also a tab on the landing page from A to Z that has subjects. And then there's also one that type, and then you can use that one over that will tell you which databases have downloadable data. So Brad in the chat is asking for, for part two at the Ann Ferentz conference. And we were kind of thinking that if this was well received, we might do it annually. I don't know if we want to do it twice a year, but but we'll see if, if Ann Farron's the better place for annually. But thank you so much. Um, is there, I don't think we have a literal list, but we could certainly turn, we'll, we'll figure out what we can get to you. Okay, <laughs> I'm writing down your name so I can reach out to you. I love the active chat, but you're also welcome to unmute and say something. So we're we going to attach the slide deck to the to the recording. Is is that what we're doing? So I will send the slide deck to CTRL and um, our CTRL friends can uh, confirm, but I believe that will then that can be added to the conference web page as a handout. Yeah, definitely. We can definitely do that. Awesome. Confirmation from Teddy. So that's not a very nice list because it'd be 60 pages long, but but that at least get the information out there. Hey. Something before, yeah. Thank I just you. wanted to say thank you so much. This was incredible. And the whole time as you were putting up, you know, the, the information, I was screenshotting each of them. <laughs> so now I have like 60 little boxes all over my desktop. But the way everything was put together, it was just so well done. And the way um, each of you, when you talked about this link, in like six words, you said what it was about. And so I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to get this list of the 60, you know, almost like an annotated bibliography, where to the right, it says all about newspapers or all about this or all about that. And so that's that's was what I was putting in the chat that something like that would be really helpful. So it's like a at a glance kind of thing instead of going to the A to Z website and trying to figure out which ones are the 60 ones, what are they about? Because then that becomes a job mm -hmm. all over again. Yeah. So that's and I know that that's more work, you know, for you guys or for for whatever, but I can't help but ask for it because it would be such a great tool for um, instructors to be able to just at a glance, oh, I can use that for my gender class. Oh, I can use that for my African-American studies class. Oh, I can use that. And then we just add it to the syllabus and dive into it and enjoy it, so. Yeah, you find the subject, I think you'll find the subject guides really useful too. 
for your awesome. for your topics. Awesome. But I just wanted to just say at the very end that I want to thank my colleagues because I've been at AU for 20 years and I learned things from them preparing this presentation that I didn't know, things I didn't know we had. So thank you. In here. Well, I think we are now officially one minute over time. Uh, so thank you for coming. Thank you for engaging with us um, through the chat. And we look forward to seeing you on campus fall semester. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, great. Thanks.